Let's talk about damage. By nature, maximizing damage is key in the Division 2. It's the backbone of literally every engagement you enter into, every activity you complete, and every accomplishment you see online. It doesn't matter if you casually play the game for 5 minutes a week or if you're a no-life, never-touched grass speedrunner. You rely on damage of some form to do anything in the game. Division 2 has a complex gear system which is made even more confusing by a lack of consistent wording throughout the game and online community. Additive, multiplicative, amplified, total weapon damage, all weapon damage, damage diversification, returns to scale? Okay, I'll stop, but you get the point. What do these terms actually mean? In order to get a grip on how to build like an expert and cruise through content of all difficulties, let's take a look at the formula the game uses to calculate damage, then look at key elements to work out exactly how and where the formula can be manipulated to favour the player. Just knowing the formula isn't good enough though. We need to know exactly where each talent, attribute and so on sits in that formula to make properly informed decisions. But fear not, I've got you covered. Whether you just want to roughly understand the formula, or want to create the Division 2's next damage calculator, this video is for you. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the prospect of maths and numbers, don't click off just yet. I'll be explaining this as simply as possible, but without compromising on any accuracy or detail. With that said, let's get into it. So firstly, let's cover the calculation itself. If this makes very little sense at this point, don't worry, we're going to revisit this after we've deep dived all of the categories. I just want to get the base calculation out there initially to add more context for when we do cover those categories. The calculation is actually quite simple, it's just a bunch of multipliers, one after the other. Your final damage is equal to base weapon damage times weapon damage times total weapon damage times the sum of critical hit damage plus your headshot damage times damage to armor times damage to targets out of cover times damage to health times amplifier 1 times amplifier 2, and then times by any more amplifiers you have. But that calculation looks way too simple, I hear you say. Surely there's way more to it, and if not, why doesn't everyone understand it? So the complexity comes from the fact that under many of these terms sits another level of calculations. Those calculations again aren't complex, but they do add another layer. The following categories have the following additional layers. Again, if you don't know what I mean when I say modifiers in this section, stay tuned because we'll review every modifier in the game later on. Firstly, weapon damage, or WD for short, is equal to the sum of all weapon damage modifiers. Total weapon damage, or TWD for short, is equal to the sum of all total weapon damage modifiers. Damage to armor, or DTA for short, is equal to the sum of all damage to armor modifiers. Damage to targets out of cover, or DTOC for short, is equal to the sum of all DTOC multipliers. And damage to health, or DTH for short, is equal to the sum of all damage to health multipliers. In online forums, I very frequently see people state that this calculation has to be executed in a certain order. For example, damage to armor occurs at the end of the calculation. To disprove this, let's look at an example. Here's a totally random calculation. If we change the order of the multipliers at the start, aka do 2 times 5 times 4, we're left with the same answer, 40. Because the division 2 damage calculation is just a series of multipliers, it doesn't matter what order we do those multiplications in, we'll always get the same result. If you want to start with your damage to armor and finish with your base weapon damage, feel free. So we very briefly touched on the calculation, now let's look at the terminology. Again, we're going to go over this in much more detail as we progress, but there's one huge elephant in the room that needs to be touched on. This is additive versus multiplicative. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't say, but I personally think that these are pretty inconclusive and confusing terms to use to describe elements of the calculation. Why do I say that? Let's take a look at the calculation again. The interaction between every single one of these terms is a multiplier, which means that they're technically all multiplicative. And I know, I can hear the argument in the comments already, but Hutchler, the terms additive and multiplicative are used to describe what happens within a category. For example, weapon damage is additive with other weapon damage sources. But in my opinion, even that definition falls short. And why is that? The most common categories referred to as multiplicative are the damage to targets out of cover and damage to armor rolls found on Fox's prayer knee pads and contractor's gloves. But as we touched on earlier, these categories in the damage calculation are equal to the sum of all damage to targets out of cover and damage to armor sources respectively. Meaning if you wear Fox's prayer knee pads and have a weapon rolled for damage to targets out of cover, that damage to targets out of cover, which everyone is calling multiplicative, is actually additively interacting within its category. Are you starting to get confused yet? Exactly my point. 
Let's drop those terms and in their place, we'll just use the widely agreed upon names of the categories. There's no need to over confuse this. One last thing, the categories in game denote stats as percentages, for instance, 150% critical hit damage. But when calculating, we'll use decimals. This means we'll need to add one to every category, so that 150% critical hit damage will be equal to one plus 1 1.5, which is 2.5. So that's the calculation. Let's start looking at sources of each of those categories. First off, base weapon damage. We don't need to go over this in much detail because it's not a number that changes build to build. The base weapon damage is just an intrinsic number which every weapon in the game possesses. The only thing that will change this number is buffs or nerfs from the developers. There's an incredibly thorough spreadsheet collated by a dedicated team of players which I put in the description. This spreadsheet holds the base weapon damage values for every weapon in the game. I'd love to bore you to death with base weapon damage thoughts, but instead I'm just going to give you some simple advice. If you need a base value, just use this spreadsheet. I'm yet to meet a single person who does this a different way. Alongside giving you explanations, I'm going to do a worked example to demonstrate how all of these numbers will come together. Fingers crossed the final number matches up with the in-game number. In this worked example, I'm going to be using this build with a FAMAS. So firstly, let's pull the base weapon damage. If I look at this spreadsheet, the FAMAS base weapon damage is 44,191. So we've covered off the base damage. Let's start getting onto the more complex stuff. Weapon damage first. So this is a good introduction into how the other categories function. It's a relatively simple one with few exceptions, so should help you to wrap your head around the others when we get there. Weapon damage, also referred to as all weapon damage or AWD, is equal to the sum of all weapon damage sources. So what are those sources? Firstly, the stuff that your character intrinsically possesses. Red cores and the weapon damage stat on your gun fall into this category. Additionally, if you spec it out in the SHD watch, that weapon damage will fall into this category. Finally, every specialization allows you to roll an extra 15% weapon damage for a specific weapon type. If you're using that weapon type, this value also falls into this category. In addition to these intrinsic sources of weapon damage, there are some talents that give weapon damage increases. These are as follows. Brand set bonuses, for example, Femris assault rifle damage. The chameleon talent. In sync, Dodge City Gunslinger's holster, Boomerang, Close and Personal, Measured with the top half reduction, Optimist, Pummel, Unhinged, Rifleman, and the Capacitor. In our worked example, I don't have any talents giving weapon damage, but we do have Red Cores, Specialization, Weapon Roll, Watch Level, Expertise, and the Fenris piece to consider. These percentages are as follows. Turning those into decimals, we get and as mentioned earlier, all weapon damage sources will add together. This gives us a weapon damage multiplier of 2.53. We'll note that number down in the corresponding column here before moving on to the next category, total weapon damage. Total weapon damage acts in exactly the same way as regular weapon damage, but it's a separate category and multiplier with fewer items sitting in it. To illustrate this, some builds you put together will have no total weapon damage sources at all, and that's fine. In a similar fashion to the previous section, let's take a look at total weapon damage sources currently available in the game. Total weapon damage is nearly exclusively tied to talent. Total weapon damage sources are Companion Composure Concussion Unstoppable Force Vigilance Wicked Empathic Resolve Focus Gunslinger Obliterate Overwatch Spark Sawyer's Knee Pads Tip of the Spear future initiative, and the bottom half of measured. Continuing our worked example, let's look at whether anything on our build is on that list. We can see that Vigilance is, so we'll need to include that in the calculation. Vigilance is a 25% bonus, so converting that to decimal, we're left with 1 plus 0.25, which is 1.25 total weapon damage multiplier. We'll note that number down and move on to the next category, critical hit damage slash headshot damage. Critical hit damage and headshot damage, as you'll have seen from the original equation, are additive with each other when it comes to calculating damage. Again, like other sources, whilst these add together, the number that comes from adding them together is a multiplier in the final equation. Obviously one, both, or neither of these will be considered when you're actually playing the game. You're not going to get a critical hit every shot, nor will you hit a headshot every shot. As and when you need to test non-crits or non-headshots, just leave that part out of this step in the calculation. When it comes to the work example, we're going to calculate damage on critical hit headshot for simplicity. As such, let's do the numbers. 
This build has 100% headshot damage and 160.2% critical hit damage. Transferring those to decimals, we get 1 headshot damage and 1.602 critical hit damage, leaving us with a total headshot crit multiplier of 3.602. So moving on now to the more misunderstood categories. Firstly, let's look at the three damage to categories, by which I mean damage to armor, damage to health, and damage to targets out of cover. These are situational buffs which only apply when you're shooting a target which meets the criteria in the name. To explain that better, damage to armor only applies when the enemy you're shooting has white armor bars, damage to targets out of cover only applies when the enemy you're shooting isn't in cover, and damage to health only applies to enemies where there are no white armor bars. The three categories sit separately in the calculation, but they all work in the exact same way which is why I've grouped them in this video. Just know that when it comes to calculating them, you'll need to do them separately. The way these categories all operate is the same as weapon damage. They're equal to the sum of all sources of that specific stat over your entire build. For instance, in the worked example build, I have 8% damage to targets out of cover on my knee pads, 10% damage to targets out of cover on my weapon, which leaves us with 18% total damage to targets out of cover. Transferring this into a decimal, we have 1 plus 0.18 equals 1.18 total damage to targets out of cover multiplier. Looking now then at damage to armor, I only have damage to armor on my gloves, so we don't need to add anything to this number, and that damage to armor on the gloves is 8%. Transferring this to a decimal, we have 1 plus 0.08 equals 1.08 total damage to armor multiplier. The same goes for damage to health. I have damage to health on my assault rifle equal to 21%. Because this is the only source, we don't need to add anything, we just need to make it a decimal. 1 plus 0.21 equals 1.21 total damage to health multiplier. Obviously, these buffs can be contradictory. As such, there is no circumstance where all three can apply at once. You can't shoot an armoured health target, such a thing doesn't exist. So be wary when it comes to the final calculation. If you didn't understand that fully, don't worry, we'll cover it off again when it comes to number crunching later on. The final key part of the calculation to cover off before we can get to actually calculating our damage is amplifiers. Amplifiers are the exception to everything that we've just covered. Under no circumstance would an amplifier add with anything. These will always be standalone multipliers. So what if you have more than one of these? How do you have two amplifiers but not add them together? To put it simply, every new amplifier you have will just get latched onto the equation as a standalone category. This is why I've denoted AMP1, AMP2, AMP3 and so on in the calculation. The number of amplifiers possible to acquire in the game is technically infinite, limited only by the number of talents that grant AMP bonuses. So where do we get these elusive amplifiers from? Amplification sources are Opportunistic, Versatile, Glass Cannon, Intimidate, Spotter, Bighorn, Lady Death, Merciless, The Scorpio 7 Shot Buff, Aces and Eights, Ongoing Directive, Strikers Battle Gear, True Patriot Red Flag, Overcharge Scanner Pulse, Achilles Pulse, Demo Tack Link, Firewall Striker Shield, Firewall Tack Link, Survivalist Tack Link, Eyeless, Ignited, Sadist, Flatline, Ranger, Sledgehammer, and the Busy Little Bee. So just a few. Through that list, we can see that two of those are utilized in the build we're using for our worked example. Perfect Glass Cannon and Flatline. As mentioned before, these do not add together because they're amplifiers. As such, we're going to pull two multipliers from this section, creatively named AMP1 and AMP2. Perfect Glass Cannon is equal to 30%, so transferring that over to a decimal, we get AMP1 equals 1 plus 0.3, which is 1.3. Flatline is equal to 15% as long as the target is pulsed, so again, putting it into a decimal, we get AMP2 equals 1 plus 0.15, which is 1.15. So we've done it. All categories of the calculation are covered off, alongside all sources for each category. Now it's time to calculate our damage before reviewing what we can do to improve damage when building. These are the numbers that we've calculated as we've gone through each section, and below them is the final calculation to get our bullet damage. Now, if you'll remember, the damage to group of multipliers only apply under certain situations, so this is where we'll decide what we're going to be shooting. As I'm going to test this in the range where all targets are out of cover, I'm definitely including that, that one. 
We'll also select a named enemy and shoot the armoured portion of its health pool, so we'll run the numbers including damage to armour too. Because damage to armour will be applied, damage to health won't, so we'll discard that number for this example. Just remember that this is the specific example I'm showing you. If you want to calculate your damage using a different set of circumstances, you just simply need to include and exclude multipliers as you see fit. So, now the fun part. We'll take the equation and sub in the multipliers we gathered throughout the video, taking note of the number it produces. After running the calculation, this is the number that it comes to. With rounding to whole numbers, this value changes to this. So now, to see whether this video has been a complete waste of your time or whether it's correct, let's test it out in the range. Drum roll please. Success! The numbers shown in the range are the exact same numbers we got during this calculation. The worked example is valid. So that covers off the calculation, but how do we apply it to work out how to improve our damage? I'm going to save you a lot of the testing and experimentation work and tell you the one simple trick that most expert builders rely on to do huge damage. Diversify your multipliers. As you now understand from the calculation, the whole formula is a series of multipliers. This gives you a choice. Either pile all of your attributes into one multiplier, or pile smaller quantities into an assortment of different multipliers, aka diversify your choices. The latter results in significantly higher damage output, due to a financial concept called returns to scale. This concept denotes the change in output as a result of an increase in inputs. Didn't understand any of that? Don't worry, you don't need to. All you need to know is that investing in one stat may seem like a good idea, but it will just result in a worse build. Ever seen YouTube builds bragging 250% critical hit damage with no total weapon damage, no amplifiers, no detoc, DTA or DTH? Yeah, that build is probably putting out less damage than a build with 100% critical hit damage, but appropriate investment in the other stats. To illustrate this, let's do a quick example. We won't use in-game figures just to simplify things. We have a simple set of numbers, 2, 5, and 3. Working out the product of these numbers, we get 2 times 5 times 3 is 30. We now have an extra 50%, or 0.5, that we can do whatever we want with. In the first case, we add this to one of the numbers already there. Let's add it to the 5. This now gives us 2 times 5.5 times 3 is 33. So that's one way of doing it. But the smart person in the room, or the expert builder, has thought of doing something different. They transfer it to a decimal and tack it on the end of the equation. This results in 2 times 5 times 3 times 1.5, which is 45. See how that second person, by introducing the same percentage but in a separate multiplier, has created a significantly larger number than the other person. This is the exact reason that things like Fox's prayer knee pads and contractor's gloves are preferable over things that pump up an already large critical hit number. But it's also a fundamental mechanic you should be considering in every build you make. So that covers off basically everything to do with the damage calculation within the Division 2. As usual, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.